Thank you, Megan. Uh, thanks to, to y'all for uh, taking the time to be out here today and let us uh, brag about uh, our Drake football team. Uh, we're very excited about the season, excited about the staff uh, that we've put together. Uh, it's a great mix on our staff of guys who have been here for many, many years, like uh, Coach Bill Charles, and uh, new guys to the program who've brought fresh ideas, uh, but with a lot of experience. So we're, we're real excited about the coaching staff that we've assembled. And then uh, we couldn't be more excited about our players. Uh, the past few days since we've come back to camp, you know, the highlight of my day every day is uh, when I get to go out in the practice field with those guys. Uh, with the kind of guys that we have here at Drake, uh, that's certainly the best part about my job, is uh, getting to coach them at the game we love, with the kind of guys that we have. And we're excited about the things that, uh, that we plan to do this year. And then uh, just in closing on, on my statements is our guys set a theme, excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is uh, a little rough right now after a few practices, but um, uh, our, our final year leaders, we call them our graduating seniors, uh, set a theme for the year of never enough. And uh, we're looking forward to living that out uh, this season. Questions for Coach? Coach, I was hoping you could go into more detail about the never enough. So, mm -hmm. um, why exactly did that come about? Can you explain that a little bit? Yes, uh, we, we have a tradition here, at least in the seven years that I've been here, that our uh, graduating seniors, upcoming graduates, uh, select a theme for the year. And really, we spend months, literally, figuring out exactly what this theme should be. Uh, each season is, is a little different. We have different principles that carry over from one year to the next. But our theme is specific to that season. And so uh, our guys wrestled and thought through this uh, very seriously uh, for this theme. And uh, we felt like last year we weren't as hungry as, uh, as we, we needed to be. Uh, coming off the two conference championships in 2011 and 2012, uh, not that anybody was intentional about it, um, but they just felt like as players we lost a little bit of that edge. And so they wanted a theme that would um, create an ongoing hunger uh, to, to reestablish ourselves and, and take ourselves further than, than what we've been in the past. So that was really the main thing behind that theme is, is never enough. Have you noticed maybe some of that stuff uh, early on in the season, just these first three practices? Absolutely. Typically, we haven't done this every year, but typically we introduce our theme at the beginning of camp in August. Our uh, seniors said, hey, we want to introduce it in May at our last team meeting because we want to use it throughout the summer. And, uh, and so we can start putting it to use in our training in the summer. We've had a fantastic summer. We had more of our guys uh, here in the summer than we've ever had before. Our strength and conditioning staff with Coach Martin uh, and, uh, and his assistant have done a fantastic job. And so we certainly have seen that lived out already. And, and you know, this isn't something you can measure, but I feel it on the practice field. And, uh, but we got to, as what we've been saying, is we've got to live it every day. Uh, it's something that you got to choose again to do that day uh, when the alarm rings in the morning. So we've got to keep keep hammering at that. Can we talk about your defense? Um, top ten in the country last year, um, <coughs> tank and points allowed, and they returned six starters, so that's quite a few. Is it realistic to think um, that they could be even better this season? Well, um, I think it's realistic to think that. That's their expectation of it. Now there's a lot of work to make that happen. Uh, it's not just going to happen by us showing up. Uh, but, you know, the, the guys that, that most people are focused on right now are the three guys in the middle for us. John Huguenin, a returning all-conference player who led our conference in tackles last year um, uh, at linebacker. Uh, we think he's got the potential to be just a fantastic player. Um, and he was selected captain, even though he still has – uh, another year of eligibility left next year. And then right in front of him, the guy who really makes John's life um, uh, easy, I guess, so to speak, are uh, Brett, Brett Park and Matt Acree, who are fifth-year seniors for us at the defensive line and, and both fantastic players. Brett has struggled with some injuries but is healthy now. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, both those guys having a great year. And uh, as I've said before is, you know, it's like baseball. If you're strong defensively in the middle, 
you're going to be strong defensively. And with those three guys in the middle, uh, we should be very strong defensively. Can you comment on the offense returning nine players? Um, can you start by talking about Andy Rice? He had a great season last year, and what it means to have a year under his belt and then um, go into the Yes, the yes. Uh, we're real excited about Andy because that – uh, that year under the belt is so critical. We put a lot on our quarterbacks um, in not just what they have to do athletically on the field, uh, but the decisions they make on the field. Um, how we've coached our quarterbacks here and continue to do so. Uh, we expect them to be basically coaches on the field and getting us into the right plays and out of the wrong plays and all those kind of things. And uh, at the beginning of the year last year, Andy was, you know, like anybody would, going through growing pains with all that responsibility on him. But you saw what he is capable of doing in the last half of the season. And uh, we believe he'll pick up right, right from there. And he's had a great off season and uh, really establishing himself as a leader uh, on our team as well. After, so having such, uh, sorry, After having such a tremendous season last year and returning this year, um, he's not one of the six guys that received one of the um, preseason accolades. Do you think um, he was slighted? And is he flying under the radar a little bit? Oh, you know, I, I don't. I don't really get caught up in those things. Uh, and I don't think ha Andy does either, to be honest with you. He certainly hasn't given me that impression. Um, those are things that are out of, out of anybody's control. And uh, you, we just got to take care of what we can take care of. What's important now is what he does moving forward. And then all those other things take care of themselves. But uh, Andy, Andy's a really, really sharp young man. I mean, not only a great football player, a great arm, understands the game, but a very, very talented student and, and uh, does, does some great things in the classroom as well. He's a special young man. Having been part of the staff, how much has that made the transition easier now? Yeah, if you had asked me that in December, I honestly probably thought it was going to be a little easier because of that. Now, there's certainly benefits about it, but one of the things I've learned as a result is uh, it doesn't matter if you're um, uh, a veteran coach, so I've coached 28 years before this year, um, I'm still a rookie head coach. And I've also learned, even though it's at the same school, so I guess I had everything going for me. I had a lot of experience and, and a lot of familiarity. Um, but hey, first year as a head coach is still first year as a head coach. And uh, I am a rookie head coach. So our players can tell you, uh, that, you know, I'm learning the ropes and those kind of things. I told them the other night is I said, uh, okay, I get to use the rookie head coach excuse one more time, and then you guys can't, can't let me do that because I'd messed up something with their schedule. Um, so I'm learning and those kind of things. But it's been great to, to be here and be familiar, especially with the support staff and, and the area and, and helping in the transition and recruiting as well. Being a rookie head coach, what's this experience and opportunity been like for you, moving from a position coach to now you're the head honcho? What's, what's this been like for you? Well, um, Vince Lombardi said the role of the head coach is to uh, make sure the uh, footballs are pumped up and the lights are turned out when everybody leaves. Um, so uh, I guess in the technology age, you got to add, uh, you know, putting tweets and out and all those kind of things. Vince didn't have to do that. But um, uh, uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been, it's been exciting. I've had uh, the opportunity in uh, each of the places I've been at to work with some really tremendous head coaches. Um, uh, let's three of the four, I, I might get these numbers wrong, were the all-time leading uh, uh, coaches in terms of victories at their schools. And so just to be around those guys and observe them. Uh, but, but it's kind of like being a child leaving home. Uh, you know, it's amazing how wise your parents get when you leave home. Uh, I was, I was uh, saying to my wife and daughter here when we were walking over, I've got my clipboard full of papers. And I said, Coach Creighton always had a clipboard full of papers in the preseason, and I never carried one around. Now I know why, <laughs> because of all the different things to go to and, and keeping it organized. So uh, I have Coach Creighton's a great friend of mine, but he's even gotten wiser in my, my eyes over the past few months uh, as a result of being the head coach. You have an opponent uh, right out of the gate that's won a national championship last year. How much does that help preparation in these first three weeks that you know you can't slack off it uh, leading up to that game? Yeah, our guys love playing Grandview. They, they love playing Grandview. Every year we've played them, 
uh, it's been a battle. A few years ago, it was an overtime game that we had to come back uh, against them late. And so we really enjoy it. And they're a great opponent. They've done a great job there, obviously winning the national championship and, and being ranked number one coming into this season in the NAIA. Um, uh, so we get excited about that game. The other thing about our conference with our team so spread out, um, it's nice to have a game with an opponent you know, right here in our town because it creates all that excitement uh, that goes with that. So we're certainly excited about that. And uh, sorry to see that that uh, series go away because of their new conference and uh, and then playing an entirely conference schedule now so we can't schedule that game um, because we would like to would have liked to continue that and uh, you know create that rivalry it's been a great rivalry I think on both sides and for both teams <clears throat> Coach, I, I, I saw um, that your offensive line may have struggled last season um, where they 117 and uh, sacks allowed in FCS, um, can you talk about what improvements um, have been made to that part of the team? And okay. Yeah, I didn't even know that record. I'll I'll uh, tell a little story about Chuck over here. He, uh, you know, does our games, and uh, we played Dayton, and uh, played really well. And after the game, he's laughing now. He comes comes down on the field, and he said, "You set a record today." And I said, we did, what is it? He said, you gave up the most sacks to an individual rusher in one game in FCS history. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he said, no, you did. And, uh, and we've talked about that as an offense. And uh, I'll, I'll say this, we have to play better on the offensive line. And I'm fully confident that we will because uh, we have a lot of experience coming back there. I think we have a very talented group. Last year, we were replacing a, a number of guys. And so we have high expectations uh, for them this year. Um, but that being said, I don't get caught up into those statistics. What's important uh, is the score on the scoreboard. Um, and so we tell our guys, listen, if we've got to keep the pressure on the defense, and that may take risking a few sacks, I'll trade five sacks for six or seven touchdowns. You know, and so we don't want to get passive because of that. Now, turnovers are a whole other deal. You cannot uh, be successful with turnovers. Um, so we got to do our best to reduce those number of sacks, um, but we're not going to let that make us passive because the goal in the game is not reducing sacks. The goal in the game is scoring more points than the other guys. So, uh, Lastly, could you just comment on uh, your tight end, Eric? Um, Eric like, Saubert. Yes. Yeah. Like really nice yeah, we're excited about Eric. Uh, you know, it, here's the uh, here's the challenge for Eric that we've talked about. Uh, actually, Coach Creighton uh, talked with him about this uh, at the end of the season last year is so last year, he came onto the scene, Kevin Marshall, who was a captain for us, a fifth-year senior, uh, all-conference player from the year before, struggled with injuries throughout the season last year. And uh, so Eric kind of stepped into that role and uh, had a fantastic year. Now Eric is one of the guys that uh, people are keeping their eye on and, and uh, have a bullseye on, so to speak. And uh, so he's got uh, some different challenges. Now he is certainly capable of stepping up to that. I mean, a guy with his, uh, with his size and his athletic ability, he's a guy who can do it all. He can line up as a tight end. He can line up in the backfield in a fullback kind of situation, and he can line up as a split receiver. He was in all of those positions last year, and we expect to, to do the same with him this year. Anything else for Coach? Coach, just kind of off, off topic of the actual X's and O's, you guys have a little bit of a new look for a new team. Uh, was that something that you guys talked about, or, or is it just uh, – Trying to be uh, catch up with the times. With the <laughs> the, um, I'm an old guy, so I don't know if I can catch up with the times. They've, they probably passed me up too much, so don't give me credit for that. Uh, our uh, our final year leaders uh, were really behind that. They started to talk talk about it right after the season uh, last year, and uh, so we've been working on this, and and they're really excited about it. And I said in an offensive line meeting uh, this morning, I said to our guys, I said, man, I said. 
the last two days out of practice, I've just looked around and thought, man, those helmets look pretty cool. And the guys were like, yeah, we love them, coach. So, um, you know, it's a fun thing. We think they look sharp. And what to me is really fun is, is really our players, players initiative and their leadership to make that happen. So that's been fun. Great. We can, uh...